I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. Hello, welcome to Cinema Royale. I'm your host, Mike Mixtape. This is the podcast where we keep it classy most of the time. Let me introduce to you my awesome film officiados of tonight, my brotherhood of cinema here. First off, we've got James Sullivan, also known as Jaime Dude. Uh, tonight's broadcast is brought to you by the opportunity of, li- of a lifetime to participate in a Patreon uh, pledge campaign uh, that uh, that I'm doing right now. Um, uh, for those of you who are not subscribed to my channel, and if you aren't, please go do so. Um, uh, I'm doing a pledge right now where my next song cover is going to be the DuckTales theme song, which uh, uh, which I'm allowing people to participate in the uh, in the chorus section of the of the song, so everyone can be doing their DuckTales. Woohoo! I want to make it a nice big chorus, and for only one dollar a month. Uh, no, not for one dollar a month. I do one dollar a video. For one dollar a video, you can be part of this. So, Mike, do we have a? Uh, can we leave a link down below for uh, the? Oh yeah. The lovely viewers. Yes, the link will be uh, in the, the description video. below. You can click on it, or if you want to stick through this whole podcast, it'll be at the end of the video too. You can click on it. Oh boy. And that's all I got to say, other than uh, the possibility that uh, I am, other than the fact that I will be wrapping a birthday present for mom right now, and maybe we'll be able to, maybe we'll be able to uh, record uh, her opening it up right here for you guys on the podcast. Ooh, get yeah. The, yeah. And our special guest of the night, uh, a good friend of mine, he makes great videos. Stevie Swigart. You got it. You got it. I know. I was yep. trying to extend it because it's your epic, man. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> I'm an epic. Oh, no problem. Uh, yeah. He's so. I... Sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. He's so. He's such a good friend. You you pause while saying while saying his name. I know. Well, <laughs> shut up, you. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's it's great to be on. Yeah, I've been watching you guys for a while, and uh, it was awesome that Mike a while but uh, last was it last year? Yeah, last year. Uh, uh, Mike asked me to do a review of this exact podcast, and that was that was actually cool to have a content creator who is a friend and fan of mine actually be like, hey, can you review my content? And it was it was actually really cool to do it. And now I'm I'm a guest here, and this is going to be an awesome night, boys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, tonight's topic of choice is uh, talking about a little bit of comedy, parody films, you know, because Stevie is doing a special thing on his channel called the Summer of Parodies. So, Summer of oh, Parodies. Yeah. So, I figured, why not, because to promote that on his channel, let's talk about parodies tonight. So, we got a handful of parody films to talk about tonight, and uh, we recommend these, because they're good ones, right? They're not the bad ones, right? <laughs> Well, we might delve into the, into a few bad ones. I'd mm. like to. Uh, well, here's the here's the thing. There, maybe there needs to be a two cents at some at some point about what actually makes a, uh, what actually makes a a parody film work. But um, uh, but uh, that's up to you, boss. That's fine, cause when it comes to parodies, actually, it's just cause. Um... A good parody has to take a parody of something, of obviously, and make it into its own thing. You know, trying to create the storyline to go with it, and then add in like little jokes in here and there throughout the whole thing. Um, some movies do that, some movies don't. And I, I, I'm a sucker for like I've seen the bad ones. I've seen like epic movie. Yeah, I've, that's. Um... I've seen like date movie. I've seen. I've seen those in the liking, and oh my god, like oh, I quit bad. after Meet the Spartans. That was like, oh, that was the one right. I did. Yep. I did that for for the first summer of summer spoof. That's what it's called. Yeah, summer that was spoof, the first yeah. one I ever. Yeah, the next one I'm doing is the comeback, also known as Sports Movie. Oh, the god, oh, that one. <laughs> 
<laughs> David Keckner as the coach, and then you got like the underdog team of misfits. And this is the most unclever joke in the entire trailer. It's and the bartender from Philadelphia is only dreams of to play ball, which is invincible, which had Mark Wahlberg. And then they have a, a Mark Wahlberg look like round of the field. Hey guys, I'm just a bartender from Philadelphia who's only dreams of to play ball. They, these movies feel like they saw the trailers on IMDb and they're like, huh, we can do something with that. Do we have to watch the movie? Nah, that's what good writers do. Just take that and boom, movie. See, yeah. and that's the thing though, these, these other parodies that kind of like shoestring a whole bunch of movies into one movie like a good parody takes one movie parodies it throughout the whole movie and yet sprinkle in a little bit of like references to other movies and poke fun at other movies not just like not just like combine everything all together like date movie for example oh my god they combine so many freaking elements from romantic movies like it's like meet the parents at one point and then meet the fuckers at one point and then it goes to this and that and this and that it's like pick like pick a f- and, p- and, and pick a movie just pick a fucking movie and parody it not just like go through each fucking movie in the genre and just parody the fuck out of it it's just well, he- uh, here here's I'm, I'm not gonna i'm not gonna rebut that uh, I'm not gonna say you're you're wrong there, but I will say this: Scary Movie One and Two, uh, fo- uh, they mainly focused on uh, they make mainly focused on a certain film universe or a certain type of film universe. Right. Uh, you know, the first one was slasher movies. The second one was uh, the second one was haunted house movies, and the reason why they worked is because. Even though they took time to poke fun at other movies, in the meantime, they didn't radically jar the universe, the universe, or rewrite any rules to uh, to suddenly accommodate that. It doesn't suddenly become this other movie, and that's the yeah. that's the consistent issue with uh, uh, with the Seltzer Friedberg productions. Um, the the hook. Date movie, uh, I, I, w- I was almost ready to give a pass on the on the grounds that it was less painful than the others, but it was not going to get any better. Uh, when you have the whole, when you have the whole, the movie is, is actually based around the jokes that the original movies had to begin with. Yeah. And there's, and therein lies the problem, because they have... They have, uh, they have on the one hand uh, a, a takeoff on the on like you said, meet the parents. They have a takeoff on the line. Uh, I've got nipples. Can you melt me? Yeah, yeah, and, and it's like, and it's all like all nipples. It's like, yeah, yes. okay. I, I thought it was sort of funny, but it just like it's, it's kind of so, clever. It was kind of yeah, clever. Kinda, it was funny. It was funnier in the original, but then exactly. we go along to other jokes where, like, uh, the guy is faking an orgasm in the middle of a, in the in the middle of a date, and yep. you're like, oh, like when when Harry met Sally. Sally. Right? Yep. <laughs> I mean, uh, it was that was so per that moment was so perfectly emulated in the it was so perfectly done in the original film. You can't top that. Yeah. And wow, did you fail? Yeah. yeah. Oh, big wow, time. Oh, big this. time. Oh, like. And here's here's another problem too. Is, uh, it's that an epic movie did this. Like all these movies do. Uh, but yeah, you guys nailed it with date movie. I've seen a little bit of that. It wasn't as painful as some of their other ones. I think it was like the the. I think it was Freeberg and Seltzer's first one, right? Like not counting Scary Movie, which they were writers on. But two out of three, special. two out of six writers of Scary Movie. Well, yeah. that's. That's like saying you're going to eat the cheese, but not the, but not the bacon, and the lettuce. I know, but um, the problem is like they're referencing comedy, and like I saw the trailer for Comebacks. They're doing the same thing. They were in, in Comebacks. They reference Dodgeball, and in a, an epic movie, they reference Nacho Libre, and it's like, what? Why would you reference movies that are already funny? The point of a spoof. Like here's why Airplane works as a parody because they took what was a serious movie. And they had a bunch of silly shit happening in it, and they made it that everyone was taking all this goofy stuff so seriously. That's what made that funny. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Oh yeah. But this it was like it was like watching a lame mad TV skit where it's like, hey look, this guy's doing a parody of Nacho Libre. Look, he's doing a really bad Jack Black impression. Nacho! It's like that was not funny whatsoever. And then like in what was it in a date movie? Like they had the cat on the toilet, but the joke was that it was like crapping loudly. It's like that's yeah. so funny. Yeah. It's, it's trying. It's trying way too hard there. It is. These movies were. Yeah, these movies were romantic comedies for that very reason. Comedies, not whatever this whatever this shit is. And oh with God. and with epic movie. Oh, oh the folk the folk. Where is the focus? Oh, what? it's all over the place. It's scatterbrained. You wanna okay? You, you wanna make fun of you want you wanna make fun of fantasy movies? Great, make fun of fantasy movies. Pick one. Pick, pick a, pick a universe. Pick the Narnia films. Make fun of those, please. But, or, or you can, or you can, maybe work in Harry Potter because it's it's a very similar kind of fantasy. But, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Why? Oh God, <laughs> that, that that has the dad from uh, Back to the Future playing Willy Chris, Wonka, Chris and that Glover. guy said yeah. Gilbert. Yeah, they ha- and, he- and he said Spielberg was money grubbing. That is pathetic. Now, see, and, and that's and that's a really really sad of, sad state of affairs. You because you see, with this film, we have with this film right here, we have a number. It has such a, a legacy behind it in terms of spoof material. So many different movies, TV shows have poked fun at it. And uh, uh, and they've all done so in a, in a loving manner. And uh, what do we get with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? The only time it's ever been spoofed, at least to my knowledge, is freaking epic movie, which has a which has a joke about eating shit out of the sewer line. Yeah, and oh, and apparently Willy Wonka is a like a like Sweeney Todd a, per- a pedophile. Movie. Oh yeah, that's right. He was a pedophile. But I was gonna a, say like he, he hacks people up and puts the, their body parts into candy. I would say that was a clever reference to Sweeney Todd, but clearly Freeburg and Seltzer have the intelligence of water drains your sis, so clearly they couldn't have done that intentionally. I mean, yeah, we're. Uh, I feel like they. And just watching the trailers. Sorry, what? I feel like eventually they got a little focus, and they did focus on one movie, like Vampire Sucks, obviously Twilight, and. Starving Games is basically like Hunger Games but with shit in between. And then Super Fast a couple of years ago was a parody of Ferris and Fast and Furious movies. So, I mean, I guess they kind of like f- did the focus on the one film parody, but now it just they just put everything else in it. Yeah. They it's too late. It is. It's, it's way too late it's too late at that point. And you know what's sad? Starving Games, which was bad, is still a better uh, uh, Hunger Games parody than the Hungover game. Oh, boy. oh I heard that about that perfect. one. Yeah. Nobody, nobody asked for either one. I know. At that point. I know. Like it's it's so stupid. Like there are skits that have made fun of. Like there's skits on YouTube. Like there's stuff on the internet that's funnier than anything that these these hacks have made. The fuck? Yes. Best night it's ever. A... Fucking a found oh, footage. Yeah. Found footage. Okay, but do you know what they're working on now? They got two upcoming mm-hmm. ones. Oh. So, this is a way too late now because the, there's one that's supposed to be out this ye- uh, coming out soon, I guess. Uh, Who the fuck took my daughter? Which is a parody of Taken. Oh come on! <laughs> it's a little late for Taken because Taken came out years ago. taken and then oh uh, Mel Brooks is not going to be the only one who did a parody of Star Wars they're going to do a parody of Star Wars next after that oh <laughs> is that the one with the long title yes yeah, the very long title I can't even like it's like Star Wars episode XXXIV equal MC2 the force awakens the last Jedi who went rogue <laughs> I, I hate I hate these guys. I do. I do really do. It's fucking ridiculous. It's why would you call a movie like 
What would you call a movie something like that? Well, there, there's an even worse title. Though. There's another parody. I, what's the... It has a long title too. And I'm trying Forty-one to year old virgin who knocked up Sarah Marshall and felt super bad about it. Yes, that's what? stupid. T- yeah, God damn yeah, it. Craig it's Moss is it. Craig Moss is another hack. Like uh... that, he made Breaking Wind, which I'm gonna be looking at that for summer too. Breaking Wind, which is an awful parody of Twilight. Um, uh, he also did one that was like Thirty Nights of Paranormal Activity with the devil inside the girl with the dragon tattoo, and I'm like, this guy. The, the word hack is not appropriate for, for the, like, these comedy writers because these guys talk so much. Like, the word hack does not apply in any way. The word hack is too nice. Yeah. And his other credits include the Badass Trilogy. Which are not parodies, they're action films. So I don't know how he gets away with doing parody films and action movies at the same time. Uh... I, I mean, okay. okay, like, like, yeah, there's some great, like, parodies out there that you can actually look up and watch, like, the, the main, the, the biggest team out there that you can watch when it comes to, uh, parodies is, uh, fuck, what was their name? Uh, dumb. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because they have great... Like they have airplane, they have eventually they. The Zucker Brothers. Yeah, thank you. I couldn't think of their name. Yeah, they have they do great parodies. I mean, they eventually split off and did other stuff too. Like I think Jim, um, did Hot Shots, which I'm gonna talk about because Hot Shots for me was the perfect combination of parody and every so. I watched both of them. I watched Hot Shots and Hot Shots, but duh. Uh, because those two are great. Those two are great. Charlie Sheen, I think he's underappreciated he's as an actor. Like he, in his past, he's he's a great actor. He does great movies, and he pokes fun in Hot Shots and Hot Shots Part Duh. I mean, Hot Shots is a, a parody of Top Gun, and they they <laughs> they exploit the hell out of that too, because the opening, you know, it's just like okay, so they they obviously do the movie. They just do the the kind of the storyline of Top Gun more or less, but they add their little flair to it, like little like little cartoony gags. Like it's very cartoony. Like there's moments where you just look at it, it's like what the fuck's going on? Like the there's an opening scene where something there was a crash and the guy's like oh no there's a trees oh the school's does no oh no bees ah and he falls down and his helmet hits uh, a branch and it looks like a deer. <laughs> He looks to the left, he's like, deer hunting starts at noon. And he's like, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh, boom, he dies. I'm like... (laughs) There's like little moments, like you have to watch very carefully. Like the the gags they do is hilarious. And like Charlie Sheen plays a guy named Topper Harvey. (laughs) Topper, (laughs) fucking Topper. Topper Harvey, the name is just fucking ridiculous. Oh, I mean, I'm trying to remember the little scenes, you know, there's, and later on, they'll, he meets up with this love interest, and they're starting, like, seduce each other and trying to have sex later on. Like, uh, like, her belly is, like, a grill, so they start putting, like, he start putting, like, eggs and bacon, and it goes sizzle, and and she's like, oh, oh, it's like, what? Because she's so hot. Cause she's so yeah, hot. Yeah. It's so fucking. I, just, I thought of one. This one was good. I forget which one. It might be the second one. It was a great gag where they're being shot at, and a guy shoots, a bullet hits a tree, and then the tree goes, oh! <laughs> I don't know why. It's like it's literally like a Benny Hill gag. That's yeah. The first, the first oh thing. yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. I mean, and then Hot Shots Burke, duh, they they uh, spoof Rambo three. So he, uh, Topper Harvey comes. Uh, Harley comes back as Rambo, like kind of like a Rambo type, didn't you? Save hostages, and both films poke fun at the Iraqis, like at the Saddam Hussein. So you see Saddam Hussein twice in both movies. So it's like it's set in the '90s, so it's like you know it's kind of it is kind of dated more or less because it's not current and but it's funny. It's funny because relevant. relevant at the time. Well, you couldn't poke enough. You can still poke fun at Saddam Hussein. Yeah. Why I mean, not? we still put fun at Hitler. That's true. Yeah. I mean, it's because 
the first one is it's very brief for him because he's like uh topper had these two heat seeking missiles come by and he's like all right i'm just gonna use them and he flies over saddam hussein's place drops a bomb and the bombs go "Uh oh <laughs> blows everything up and I'm, I was like, okay, must have killed him. And then the second one, they bring him back to be the villain in the movie, like, at the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny, too, because there's a fight scene with the president. And he, it's like, he takes a fire extinguisher and, and puts it on the, Saddam and the dog. And they freeze, like, in Terminator. They, they spoof Terminator 2. And he's, like, walking, like, tsh, 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 and it gets frozen. Knocks him over. And, you know, and then he kind of, like, reforms <laughs> as the Terminator. But, but the funny thing is, is that the dog was frozen, too. So he combines with the dog, so he's got, like, a dog face. <laughs> oh, my God. Right. He's got, like, little oh, puppy ears. And it's... <laughs> yeah. But then, yeah, but are they... These, are these movies on, on Netflix or Prime? I have to... I gotta know. I don't think they're on either. Like, I had to search. Oh. I know. It sucks. Come on, Netflix and Prime Video. You gotta put them on because these movies are great. You, there's like the little nuggets of gold. Like you have to like watch yeah. for every little thing. Like it is just I can't describe all the jokes in it because it's just you have to see it for yourself. Like it's one of my favorite spoof, spoof mo parody movies out there. Like Hot Shots and Hot Shots Bar Duh. It's just oh my god. I just I could just um. <laughs> I just can't stop laughing just thinking about all the jokes like in the second one uh, it's probably on the poster too where he's got the, he's like the bow and arrow with a chicken that's on the poster the and so he, he he runs out of arrows because every time he's shooting an arrow the guy ducks down and he misses the guy so there's chickens around the area so he grabs a chicken and he just stretches out it's like clucky James it's like clucky he stretches out clucky <laughs> and he just and the chicken's going Wah! It just hits it right in the center, and it's like, and then it poops out an egg <laughs> afterwards. It goes cockatoodle doo. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's such a non sequitur. It's great. Like that's like, like that's how you again. That's how you do a good parody movie is when things are just so outlandish and silly. It's cartoonish. That's when you can get away with it. It's cartoony. It's if you do cartoony elements in a spoof movie, that's how you make good parody movie. It's like you keep come up with these outlandish parts like oh there's a part where he's shooting up all the bad guys and there's like a body count in the corner and it keeps climbing up and it's like and it says uh level robocop level and it keeps going did it climb it up 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 and it goes level total recall level and it says did it did it keeps climbing up and it always said bloodiest movie ever i i have not yeah, I've not seen this movie, but I, I do remember James Rolfe's uh, uh, favorite shootouts yes. list that he did years ago. That's right, he, he did list that. He mentioned that and, po and just said, wow, that's, that's hilarious. They had the audacity to claim, uh, to make that claim when there's not a drop of blood on screen. Exactly, exactly. That's the funny thing about it. Um, one of the th things I remember the most about the sequel part duh, is that um, be right back. I gotta, I gotta look for something. Okay. okay. Keep going. Char Charlie Sheen Hi. is uh, in the boat, and he's like writing like a little diary, and all of a sudden you hear like inner monologue of another character, and it's um, Martin Sheen, his father, who is reprising his role from Apocalypse Now. And all of a sudden, they stand up and look at each other, and they say, "I loved you in Wall Street," because <laughs> they were because they were both in Wall Street. And I was like, <laughs> "That's the one I remember the most." So, That's a good one. oh man, like it it takes the spoof of like action, like the like action genre in general. I mean, Top Gun was more about the flying, which it was just hilarious seeing what they were doing. Like, there's a part in the first movie where they're trying to fight the the fighters, the type, like the other planes, and he's like, "Oh shoot, I'm out of missiles." So Charlie Sheen, Topper, he goes, taps on, taps on the other planes, like, "Hello, anybody home?" Like with the plane, he just like, da 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 da. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. So, ah, oh, I mean, that's that's how you make a great parody is just by outlandish, goofy shit.
it's just I, I actually laugh so loud like watching these films again just after all these years it's just like hot shots and hot shots for, uh, I mean it's uh, great to watch those I'm trying to think great. of other, other bits out of the movies like um, <laughs> they, they're jumping out of a plane and they're like Geronimo 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 and you actually see Geronimo saying me jumps out of the plane <laughs> yeah <laughs> I just thought uh, it's like stuff like that just oh and then like going through the jungle and there's like I got and sh I know a shortcut and they cut through somebody's backyard <laughs> so you see the, the basketball court and you see the gorilla and you see these two the, the couple bickering <laughs> just passing through a backyard in the jungle in the jungle <laughs> that's good it's just like you know <laughs> I just wish there's more parody movies that just, you know, try to take one movie and just go with it, you know, and add their flair to it at the end. Yeah. I mean, even in which, which, right. even in the sequel, like, they even parody Star Wars a very little bit. I mean, with the, star, the lightsaber fight between the President of the United States and Saddam Hussein, that they, like, Saddam even, like, talked like Darth Vader for, like, a bit, like, I've been waiting to fight you for this long, and it just, like, they had lightsabers at each other. So it was like, they're so clever with it. Yeah, I mean, it seems like now they're obviously they're not the newer ones aren't good, but I mean like there's some movies that are like nowadays, and we talked about them a little earlier that are like trying to do like one singular movie and they're awful, like Fifty Shades of Black, which was Fifty Shades of Grey but with, the, with the Williams brothers, um, Meet the Blacks, which was supposed to be The Purge. But like, they're, they're, those are awful. Hot Shots and Hot Shots Part 2 are great examples of, like, taking one singular movie, which were, you know, obviously uh, Top Gun and Rambo Part 3, and, you know, obviously references along the way, but it was essentially one movie specifically that they were doing. Yeah. Exactly. It's, uh... I give Charlie Sheen props, because he's comedic in these movies. Like, he's funny in these. Like, it's... Ugh... Oh. I, I, I mean, despite... He's funny in these movies. You look at him now, not so funny anymore. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you look... I mean, that's the thing. People, like... He just went downhill. I mean, just... I thought, you know... If you look back at his movies, he does good acting. And Hot Shots... And Hot Shots, but duh. It's just that they're perfect. They do... Makes it perfect with this comedic timing and all that stuff with the movie. Back then, he was winning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I feel so dated for that. That was a 2011 joke. <laughs> On the tiger blood. Yeah. And then there was that whole scene where he where he was uh, knowingly spreading AIDS to other women. But you know. Oh God, that's right. <laughs> What's yeah. the matter? What what happened to you, Charlie Sheen? <laughs> Did you revert back to that? To being that kid in in the police uh, in the police uh, station in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, just going drugs. <laughs> oh, are you in here because of drugs? Oh no, this is hilarious because in the first movie, they uh, Topper is trying to seduce this one movie, Ramada, I think, and she and he's like singing a song that's obviously lip singing to a song, and it's like there's a montage they cut to, and it's like they show. Uh, Oh, what movie did they show? Like Casablanca, they show like <laughs> they, they like show Superman, like Charlie Sheen as Superman flying in the air, and it, the joke is like there's a dove that flies on his hand, and they shows it to the girls like oh, but they, they won't get off his hand, so he's like shaking, it. it's like oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so like even in the second movie they because uh, they they explain that it's been years since those two have been. A, Apart, and the last time they remember is a, a date in a restaurant, and they make like a live action Lady in the Tramp where the two guys start, do this song, like a parody of the song, and then, right. and then Charlie, they, they, they just start doing like the whole thing where <laughs> they start eating spaghetti, and the, the first time around it was like a shoelace and it goes the foot up to his mouth, and then. <laughs> But then the second time we get they get the you know the kiss together and then they just you know Charlie Sheen does the meatball thing to the girl and he just she just takes the fork and eats it. <laughs> so, so you could even do take a Disney movie and parody it so well with the scene. I mean, 
you, you don't see that often. I thought it was like pretty clever just doing Lady and Tramp thing in the movie. It's like, uh... you know, you just reminded me of something years ago. Uh, uh, years ago, um, uh, uh, the fellow you named David Zucker had actually uh, announced that he was uh, he was planning to do at one point a, a spoof on family films. Uh, you using his particular formula that but that was around 2008 2009 ap, uh, ap, after yeah after American Carol oh that his, sucked that movie was awful I loved it but for different reasons it's like it's here's the thing on one hand I appreciate the, and uh, if you guys follow my channel like I I'm moderate I don't fall under any political party I can appreciate the fact that there's like right-wing people doing comedy. I really can. Um, but if you're to ask me, like, based on my personal opinion with an American Carol, I feel like it is as clever as Trevor Noah's Daily Show. And by that I'm saying I don't really care for Trevor Noah's Daily Show. Just because I just, I, I'm sorry, I just think Trevor Noah's not as good as Jon Stewart. Trevor Noah just comes off as wooden. But, yeah. Okay. I will say this. Uh, yeah, it, it came in after that. Uh, it was going to be called Family Movie, I guess, or something like that. I don't know. But you you have to sort of... You have to sort of uh, take an idea like that and just wonder, why isn't... Why aren't those... Why don't those happen often? Why don't they... Why don't they... Uh, why is there not a, a spoof movie about kids or family movies for kids. Yeah, I, that'd be a good, like, movie idea, like, because there's so many kids' movies out there, and, you know, and then kids can probably understand the references, you know? You know, kids would be like, ha-ha, they're making fun of that, and stuff like that, you know? I think the closest we got to a parody movie of family movies recently, and this was, a, this was not a kids' movie, this was made for adults, you guys obviously know which one I'm going to say. It's Sausage Party. So, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. That was, that was made for a... That was that, totally made for a... That, yeah, that makes sense. That, you can, that does... Yeah. It's kids' movie tropes being parodied more like, but... Uh, true, true. Like things coming to life. Mm-hmm. Oh, it looks like a kids' movie, therefore we'll show it in front of Finding Dory as a trailer. <laughs> <laughs> that was a dumb decision on that. Whoever ran that, based on that, that they were they deserve to get fired immediately. Uh, all right. But well, yeah, uh, but yeah. Overall, just freaking check out Hot Shots with Hot Shots. But uh, it's just they're great movies. They're just, I mean. And it's interesting too. One well, last thing is that Hot Shots even like parody Rocky. That's the one I was thinking of in the montage. The, the first one was like Charlie Sheen was acting like Sylvester Stallone, all beat up at the end, like Adrian. And he's like, now he, in the sequel he plays Rambo, another Stallone part. So it's kind of cool when he did that. But yeah, just check out these movies. They're really great. Charlie Sheen is a gem in these movies. Like I'm starting to become, you know, a fan of his movies now. Going back to his film, film catalog so uh which reminds me there's back in the 80s there was a certain movie that's bait that was spoofing a tv tv show based on a tv mm -hmm. show sort of so what what was that that was like 30 years ago wasn't that james yeah uh we're i believe we're speaking about uh the 1987 film uh dragnet starring Starring Dan Aykroyd and Tom Hanks. In about, if you think that's a, if you think that's a bizarre choice, there, uh, here's here's a little bit of a, uh, here's a bit of um, history lesson for you. Yes, um, yes, there was a TV show uh, uh, called Dragnet back in. I see what what era was it? Uh, the nine oh, 1951. It was uh, yeah, it was uh, produced in color. It was it was very popular. It ran 
it ran for in reruns for decades uh, afterward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, actually, I'm getting. No wait, I'm. I'm getting. I'm getting mixed. I'm getting mixed sources here. No, the Dragnet TV series was also 1967. Oh, okay. So there's there's different. Okay, so there's different iterations, but yeah, it was uh, it was a, a a TV series mainly about two police officers. Um, who uh, uh, who saw who saw crimes in the in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, and uh, for for the particular time period that it that it uh, that it dove into, it was. It was gritty. I mean, I, I watched the show as a kid. Nowadays, you could watch it and be like, okay, this is safe material. It ran on Nick at night when I was a kid. So, uh, okay. <laughs> so that's how... I mean, I wasn't a frequent watcher or anything, per se. But I, I can say that... Um, I can not say that I, I watched it enough just to... Uh, just to uh, be familiar with it. And... To give you a sort of taste of the show, um, especially with Jack Webb's uh, immortal portrayal as Joe Friday, I want to I want to set the stage for the film a little bit by showing you a a clip from the t from the TV show that I that I actually came across years ago, um, but um, it's not a it, it's not a very conventional. Uh, a clip from the clip from the show, as you as you'll probably uh, notice by the editing. Uh, let's just say that this, uh, in ter in terms of everything you need to know about the show, and how it ran, this is yeah this this clip sums it up. But I should also let you know that uh, this video was uploaded to YouTube seven years ago, right after the. Uh, arrest of the long-awaited arrest of director Roman Polanski. Uh, oh boy. So, and it brought back my love. It reminded me about what made the show great. Was just how, was just how timeless it was and how, how poignant it was. So, I hope I have the the share sound, yeah. I have the share sound running. Let me know if uh, you guys, you guys can see this. Yep. Yep. Okay. Let me know if there's any sound issues. All right, here we go. I think at that time, <clears throat> I had a hard time to uh, persuade myself that it was wrong because I don't think anybody was hurt. Later on, I realized, you know, just, you know, I was too close to the forest to see the trees. I know now it was not, it was not the right thing to do. But it was, there was no premeditation, you know, it was uh, something that just happened. And I don't understand why should I be, uh, why should I be punished for that pension that I had to young women? Now you listen to me, you gutter mouth punk. I've dealt with you before, and every time I did, it took me a month to wash off the filth. I'll tell you what you did with that girl. You waited for the right little girl to come along. Tuesday afternoon at 4 o'clock, she did. You told her you were going to take her for a ride around the block. You got her in your car, she started to cry. And then you know what you did to her. I get your head up when I'm talking to you. You confessed what you did to that little girl. That was the truth. Now you sit here and tell us that you didn't. That's a lie. Like every hoodlum since Kane up through Capone, you've learned to hide behind some quirk in the law. And, mister, now you've graduated. You've moved to the sewer. You're a child molester. And I'm going to stop the video right there. Uh, I got it. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the video is uh, is pretty much uh, uh, listing off different uh, different directors who were on Plansky's side during, you know what's going on here. Yeah. Uh, 
All except for Luke Besson, who came out and said, uh, said, you know, we only have one just, we only have one justice system, and that is that. Ah, uh, okay. But, which, by the way, that Valerian movie looks nice, doesn't it? <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll mention that in a couple weeks. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'll go see that. I don't like. Anyway, go, uh, oh yeah, Dragnet. Now, you get the idea, even though this is a spoof video, you get the idea of what kind of character that uh, that Jack Webb is. He's uh, he's a very brass, uh, no-bullshit type of character. And uh, so when it comes to the... So when it comes to the 1987 movie, uh, we have something a little different. We have, uh, yeah, the the characters you see there are uh, Joe Friday and and uh, Bill Gannon, I believe, is the, other, is the name of the other character, uh, who were who were partners during the course of the show. Um, the '87 uh, film focuses on uh, focuses on the on uh, this the nephew. Of Joe Friday, uh, played by Dan Aykroyd, and his partner, played by Tom Hanks, who has no relation to the other guy. He's right. just the, uh, he's just the. Where whereas um, whereas Aykroyd's Dan Friday is is putting on is putting on the Jack Webb character, and very legitimately so very legitimately like he he has his mannerisms down to the down to the t in terms of his in terms of his execution he's able to talk like this really really fast and he'll 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 be able to read out to you the law in five seconds mm -hmm. whatever law that you're breaking in the in the in the heat of the moment he'll read off the subsection <laughs> and uh and exactly what what law it is to the t that's how that's the kind of brass balls that uh, that Joe Friday is. But on the other hand, Tom Hanks's character is the is the the good cop to the bad cop, and that's and that's where this becomes that's where this becomes a buddy comedy. Yeah, that's what it is. Ah. Yeah. It's a, oh. So it's I, it's it's a. It's a based on the TV show more or less by name, but in the same, but in the same sense, almost almost in the same sense that Charlie's Angels the movie is based on the TV show. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to ask, I was about to ask like because you know we got movies nowadays like uh, Twenty One Jump Street and Baywatch that are all based on like these older shows. Starsky and Hutch, which was a while back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's like one of those kind of where they take an old show and make it like a comedy. It's yeah, or even how the Brady Bunch movies, even though those were were making fun of sitcoms and comedy shows, they were poking fun at the uh, they were poking fun at the source material as yeah, well. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of too, because that's kind of the new thing now is taking these TV shows and turning them into movies, and now they're comedies thanks to the Twenty One Jump Street, you know, and trying to kind of parody in a way but yet trying to be like the show more or less so I, that's what I thought yeah. I was like when you said Dragon I was like oh that's another topic we should talk about because that's what that's a, that's kind of our new parody thing now is with TV show movies the shows based on yeah. movies based on TV shows so uh, but with Dragnet, mm -hmm. but based on Dragnet though, it's it's kind of like it is kind of based on the show. It's got the premise of it more or less with the characters, but it's kind of like a parody and homage to the original, as well. Yeah, yeah. Aykroyd uh, studied the studied this character down to the T. He he wrote this thing too. Yeah. Uh, oh. So he's so this this was one of. You know, th this was just his project that he wanted to do. Um, the it, aside from the buddy comedy aspect of it, uh, using using that formula to poke fun uh, to poke fun at the original show, placing placing Jack placing Joe Friday in 
a more in a even in a more modern uh, atmosphere, uh, sort of removing him from his uh, from his uh, already somewhat somewhat dated element. That's what um, uh, that's what can also make it funny. But they take they take this the extra step. They're. Uh, uh, the uh, the mystery that they're trying to unravel uh, has to do with the with the, a cult that's that's going around that that's going on in the underground in L.A. played by uh, that's headed up by no surprise Christopher Plummer who uh, who's a terrific bad guy actor oh yeah and here's where th- here's where things get silly. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna give you another quick screen share here. I'm sorry I couldn't find a, a better uh, copy of this, a, a cleaner photograph for you for you guys to see here. But um, here we have a little uh, sacrifice scene for the cult, which speaks for itself. Just a, yeah, it's just a, it's just a, a photograph. But yeah, this is our cult. They they seem to be some sort of mishmash of everything of everything that you uh, despicable that you can find. They're a, it's a little bit Hitler. It's a little bit sacrifice the goat. It's uh, uh, not pictured in here. It's a little bit uh, Ku Klux Klan. So they're just um, everything we hate. Everything that you, everything that you know that you hate, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're in here. If I'm not mistaken, I think they're called Pagan, but they but they spell out the name P A G E N. It stands for something. Yes, it's a it's an acronym. I'm trying to remember what the acronym was, but I can't remember what it was. But it's Pagan, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's the deal. So uh, they're. They're just not, like you say, they're not, it, it's, it works as a comedy because it's not taking itself too seriously. Um, that's what, that's what I, what I think makes it qualify as a spoof instead of a, instead of a straight up, um, uh, adaptation. Right. I guess, I can, like I said, I can understand because that, that, because yeah, it's not totally based on it, it's not. Like you said, it's the nephew of the original character, so it's not like the, it's the actual person. It's, just, it's the nephew, which kind of reminds me of another movie that has the nephew <laughs> in a movie. I was afraid I was afraid you were going to mention James Bond Jr., but uh, go ahead. Oh God! I was that that too. Yeah, James Bond Jr. James but... Bond, James Bond. And it, it makes no sense too. It's like it's. It can't be Junior because it ain't blood. It ain't, it's it's. It's not blood. You were not his son. <laughs> but I was also thinking of Shaft. Oh yeah. Shaft. Shaft. Samuel Jackson playing the nephew of John Shaft, which, I mean, which he's also a John Shaft, but. Uh... Just. Uh, but yeah, I, I can see what you mean, James. It's like. That's that's well, that's why I just made me wonder about the TV show mo- movies of now because it's like they're they're kind of like parroting the show in general like uh, Twenty One Jump Street did that perfectly you know they kind of parody it in a way you know poke fun at it like breaking the kind of breaking the fourth wall in a way it was like we're bringing this old program back in the eighties you know and see if this works again and kind of like poking fun that way and then. You know, and then even bringing the original stars from the show actually to make a cameo appearance at the yeah. end, which kind of wraps it or, together in a package. With even like Tony Two Jumps, they even pushed it further with it too, going to college instead oh, of and the have them cool. and have the original show cast get shot. <laughs> they but, did it well. They didn't have them get shot in, the, in this one, but I mean the Starsky and Hutch movie from like I think 2005 oh, oh. with Ben Stiller. They had them show up at the end too. But that, Okay, yeah, okay, that. okay, okay, that made no sense, actually, because 
first off. Yeah, they're playing the same characters. Like, like in, in 21 Jump Street, it makes sense because uh, Jay Tatum same, and Jonah Hill are two different people. Yeah, from and the original it, characters. It, it's the same program. It's like the, they, they went undercover, you know, and Johnny Depp and whoever else from the original show, they're they're in the same program. But with <laughs> Starskin freaking Hutch, the, at the end, it's like you see the cameo at the end, and it's like they have the same. It's like because the car drowned in the water, and. Uh, Snoop Dogg's Huggy Bear, Teddy fi- Bear. Huggy Bear. H- Huggy Bear Huggy Bear finds another car like it and it ends up being their car and it's like wait 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 what's going on here like they dress the same they're like the same it's like are they the same characters are they in this it, that's a paradox <laughs> I, I I you know what I just tried not to think of it too much because I I, I, I think uh it's it summed up in that in that one exchange uh, between uh, between Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson where they just say, "Who are these guys? I don't know, but I'm getting a, a good vibe from them." <laughs> yeah, they. Yeah. I mean, they don't they don't come in as their as their original characters or their own names or anything. It's just yeah, they, it's just left up to you. And it, it is, and Sarah Skinner Hutch is a great example of, you know paying a watch of the original show while doing its own thing and making fun and it tends to be serious at times too like, like a good parody actually a good freaking parody has a serious moment or two like it doesn't mm-hmm. be jokey all the time yeah. they have a serious moment or two like it acts like a real movie and not like just ha 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 joke 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 they have a serious moment or two in between you know have some tension going on for whatever they're parodying so example uh, the Final Girls, which uh, pokes merciless fun at uh, at the Friday the Thirteenth films and slasher movies of the eighties, yep. has uh, has a good degree of serious moments. We've we, we've seen that together. Yeah, we did. Yeah, and that's and, another uh, good example of that. And uh, a superhero movie, which is a yeah. uh, is a is actually a halfway decent spoof. I Buried under a mountain of uh, of uh, seltzer and Friedberg, um, uh, tries to fake a few serious moments with the uh, with the uh, guy playing uh, with the guy playing um, uh, Stephen Hawking uh, as the as the moral messenger uh, equivalent, but uh, more or less it comes across. It sort of in delivery it comes across as either this is the serious moment or is this is the poking fun at serious moments in superhero movies, where you uh, where you have the the perfect uh, the wise uh, the wise uh, mentor character start uh, start preaching out the message. Whatever it was, I forget. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's interesting to note. Oh, that's yeah, that's... right. There was, there was one, there was one spoof in that batch that was actually halfway decent. Superhero movie. Yeah, and that's a totally random one. That's not even by the bad people, or the, it's like some random. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that was Zucker, I think. No, it wasn't. Wasn't? No, superhero movie was directed by Gr- Craig Mans Manzin, M A Z I N. Oh, okay. And he only directed one other movie, so he's a writer, actually. He wrote... Oh, that... Okay, yeah, that's right. That's he, right. Also, he... I, I remember this is a fun fact at random. I remember the original title for that was going to be Superhero, because they wanted it to be, like, Airplane. It was going to be Superhero, and then an the exclamation point at the end. Because Airplane did that? Yeah. So they, but then they changed the Superhero movie, because it's more marketable. Yeah, he he writ, he wrote uh, uh, Scary Movie 3... Scream oh, Zucker Mo- was a producer. That's right. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. He and then after a superhero movie, he wrote uh, Hangover Part Two, The Hangover Part Three, Identity Theft. He also wrote, he also wrote the the Huntsman Winter's War. What? What? You go from oh. comedies to go. Th- <laughs> okay. That's a random turn to to writing comedies. Yeah, go from comedies to write a serious, like, sequel slash prequel to Snow White and the Huntsman. That's fucking weird. Um, That's, I mean, how do you... How do you transition that way? No wonder that movie looked ridiculous. 
I thought it was just because the first one was. Uh, but yeah, I just um, I'm trying to think of other. I mean, other, other examples of like this year alone, like you had Baywatch and Chips for crying out loud for TV show. Oh god. Yeah. Did you guys see either of those? Because I heard chips were... I heard both of those weren't very good. The, the both weren't. Like, I can understand Baywatch is trying to be, like, parroting the show itself because, like, why is she running in slow-mo? I'm the only person that sees that. It's a freaking... Sh I mean, and then chips, I have no idea because that is a total beast of its own. But I'm just... It's interesting how movies based on TV shows are become the new, like parody-esque kind of comedies now because they're poking fun at the... The new movie movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and Dragnet might have... Uh, Dragnet might have been, like, the first in a long line of those, in a way. They were the movie movies before the movie movies. And they will continue to be the movie movies. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Speaking of movie movies, that was the movie I wanted... I was going to discuss. Uh-oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, I segued into it for you already. Thank you, James. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. Perfect. Okay, so, Perfect. So, yeah, I, like I mentioned, the movies I was going to do for Summer of Spoof, I already did Meet the Spartans, then I was going to do Comebacks, and then the third one, final one of this, was going to be Breaking Wind. The movie I decided to do for this podcast is Scary Movie 5. Oh. Now, I'm going to be blunt. I'm going to be honest. I kind of like the first four. Now, the the second, the last two, the uh, three and four, they're not as good as the first two. They they go, especially the fourth one. They go after way too many movies. The fourth one has like four different movies they're parodying. Thank you, well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, there's stuff that I think that was funny in it. Does not mean it was a good, it was a great movie. It doesn't mean it was even a good movie. I just think Scary Movie Four had funny moments in it. Third one was a little bit more coherent because it was technically two movies they were going after. It was like Signs and uh, what was the, other one? the Ring. But there were parts in Scary Movie 3 that were stupid. Case in point, the 8 Mile parody. Why was that in there? No reason other than it was current. Um, but Scary Movie 5, I think, is way worse than Scary Movie 4. Um, this, mm. this isn't even directed by the Zuckers or the Wayans. The Wayans actually did their own parody of Haunted House movies that exact year with Haunted House, which Haunted House 1, I think, is decent. It's not, again, not a great movie, but there's funny things in it. Second one, that one sucked a lot, so, yeah. But I can see where you're coming with that. Scary Movie 5 is actually produced and written by David Zucker. And oh, it can... Oh. And it's ghost directed by him and maybe one... Oh, oh, additional scenes, it says. It's okay. It's okay. It's still... It still it's looks god-awful. It's still, it's still a Zucker movie. Yeah, and it's directed by Malcolm D. Lee, who is the brother of Spike Lee. That's, that's embarrassing. I thought he <laughs> but, was um, a cousin. But yeah, I think it's something. Cousin. Cousin of Spike Lee. Cousin. Yeah. Cousin. cousin. Yeah, this is... This is the guy who gave us Underground for Brother, which was actually a funny comedy. Yes! 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 yes Undercover for Brother! And Roll Down! You know, you just... Undercover uh, Under for Brother is actually a parody of, like, those... Kind of like the black exploitation kind of, like, and the... Uh, God damn, I remember that movie now. It's Boo's black exploitation films of the 70s, that's right, and James Bond. So it's another parody movie. So it's a good example of a parody. So movie. yeah, that's so a good example. Yeah, how, how do you go from Utter, Utter Cover Brother to Scary Movie Five? <laughs> oh man. Oh. Sorry, Stevie, go on. You go on. You're frozen. Oh, he's uh, frozen. Up, oh, he's dropped. Ah, poo. It's all right. Hold on. We're we'll trying to give him back, okay. folks. Ring a ring a ring a ring. A ring a ring a ring a ring. Yeah, Undercover Brother was kind of like the uh, the black exploitation Austin Powers, Sorry, for, that, for lack of a better term. It's okay. Uh, so, um, getting back to Scary Movie Five. Scary Movie Five. What's um, wrong with this? So what? So what makes it suck? Okay, so basically this one goes after Paranormal Activity and Mama. Now we all know Paranormal Activity was kind of scary when it first came out, and then it just became a laughing stock, and I didn't even see Mama, so I don't really know much about that. 
Um, looking at the trailer for it, for, when I first saw the trailer for Scary Movie 5, and even seeing the movie itself, it feels like what they were trying to do was they wanted Ashley Tisdale and I forget who was the, the black chick in, that, in, the, in the fifth one was. It felt like they, like, if they were like, hey, if Scary Movie 5 does well, we're going to make you guys the new Anna Faris and Regina Hall. And I was like, ah, so they want to do like a reboot now? Like, because Anna Faris, I think, has like a quick cameo. The guy from like the third one is in it, but he's not the same character. Oh, um, Charlie Sheen is in there as himself. I was just going to say, oh, yeah. and that's the only, <laughs> not the only one. It's like, oh, what a coinkening. Two Charlie Sheen movies in one podcast. <laughs> um, no, but, but uh, no, they're... She's oh no Anna Faris is not even in it at all. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they're right. B- both of Anna Faris and uh, Regina Hall are not in this at all. They're just nowhere to be found. Yeah, and I, it, it it feels like like I said, it feels like they were they were like, hey, if this does well, you guys are gonna be like this is like the next generation of scary movies, and mm. I'm sorry, just like which thank God that that went no, thank God there's no plans for scary movie six. Or like any other future ones, because like it's just they, they these guys say what you want about like the other ones and how handy that Regina Hall and Anna Faris were, they were miles better than this. And I'm sorry, Ashley Tisdale doesn't seem like she's even caring in this movie. And same with the other actress, like Anna Faris specifically had like kind of like a doe-eyed like kind of like thing to her performance, like she was like goofy. And Ashley Tisdale is sleepwalking through this whole film, and. Then you get to the references. There are so many stupid references in this movie. They, they reference the dumbest things for no reason. There's a reference... To, okay, this came out in 2013, and yet they reference stuff that was relevant in, like, the previous three or four years. They reference whatever Planet of the Apes movie came out before. Rise. Rise. Right, yeah, they the, parody the Rise and Planet of the Apes, which is specifically there just so that they can have a guy in a bad monkey mask. Yep. Um, they have... Uh, I think Cabin in the Woods yep. is in there. Yep. Uh, they reference Medea. Yes. Why? Yeah. Because Medea is contemporary. Medea is all over the place, and she won't ever go away. Even yeah. though, even That's... though apparently it's only white audiences that are tired of her. <sighs> oh my God. Yeah. No. Uh, here's the thing. I remember this movie for one particular reason is because this movie spoofed Evil Dead. Yes. And it was released yeah. weeks before the, and this is this is this movie was released. Uh, Evil Dead was released before this movie came out, so it was interesting how they took reference to Evil Dead, even though the, the remake of Evil Dead came out the same year as this. So yeah, um, and uh, they made a Fifty Shades of Grey reference yes. before there was even a movie. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, Which, what do you? What are you trying to do here? Just uh, are are you trying to anticipate the spoofing? <laughs> exactly right. Like I guess this was before Fifty Shades of Grey was like Twilight or Nickelback, where it was like pretty much the in thing to make fun of it. <laughs> like they were, so they were trying to be like ahead of the times. They're like, hey, look, we referenced it before anyone else did. Exactly. Um, but I mean, oh, Snoop Dogg. Speaking of Snoop Dogg, we mentioned earlier Snoop Dogg's in this. So. Mm-hmm. Oh like, yeah. You know, basically, what Cat Williams was the haunted house, he, Snoop Dogg is. Uh, and he's, he basically comes in as the guy who knows everything about the, the, the haunting in the house. Uh, no, because Cat he's Williams. Snoop Dogg. Yeah, exactly. Oh god, and then they, they do. This is one of the dumbest lines in the movie. They do a bit where they go over different horror movie parodies, where it's like they're running in the woods and they're like, quick her before she goes to that cabin in the woods. Wait, you mean the one from Texas Chainsaw Massacre? No, the one from... Uh, what was the one they said? It was... No, the one from Evil Dead. It's like, there's nothing clever about that. It's just listing off movies that were current at the time. You can't just it's, references, not just... God. Uh, get um, it? Because we said cabin in the woods? Which, which, which technically... Is, which yeah. is technically a spoof. Yeah, a very serious one though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's kind of true. Actually, it does take the. It's like it's it, a genre well, spoof, more like. Uh, the uh, cabin in the woods is kind of like the inside look at the tropes of horror movies, actually. So. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways. Yeah. 
And, Not uh, spoofing any particular film, just uh, spoofing the the tropes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, oh god, and like the the funniest stuff in this movie was the dumbest sight gags you'll ever see in your life. Because like, okay, there's a part where they're in a nightclub and they show a DJ doing the turntables, and then all of a sudden it zooms up and the turntables are pizzas. That that's the joke. What? Okay. <laughs> What? Okay, another part. They might be a, that might be funny in a in a Chuck E. Cheese advertisement, but <laughs> oh god, then they parody Black Swan. Yeah. Why they're referencing Black Swan three years after it came out is beyond me. Mm-hmm. And uh, they have a bit where the ballerinas come out, and one chick has like a has like a tire around her waist instead of a tutu, and it's like, is it funny because it's stupid? Because that's what this feels like. It's, look, it's like you look at it and you're like. Like, as a still image, you're like, it's kind of funny, but then you look at it, like, in motion, you're like, no, it's not a joke. Um, oh, God. oh, then, oh, when they do Is the there also a Honey fight. Boo Boo, there's also a yeah. Honey Boo Boo scene in there? Yeah, there is. They go up in the attic to see something that's haunted, and then you have this little girl rise up, and she, Honey Boo Boo, child! Because it was relevant when it came out, which may, reminds me how much I hated Honey Boo Boo. So much. Still do. I... I feel so sorry for that kid. She's gonna get screwed up from that. Yep. From that level of exposure. Oh, it's still going on. I mean, they're not. Mm-hmm. Uh, freaking mother lost well lost weight, and now she's trying to look hot. There's that yeah, new. Yeah. She's that's her new show, and then of course I think, fucking yeah I do. Sorry, I did watch the show back in the day. Shut up. I just it's hilarious to see the, the the stupid kid and everything. So I I know what's yeah. going on. Uh, like I've seen episodes mm-hmm. now where she's with a stepmother now and Sugar Bear, and now it's just like Mama June's like trying wait, to be. Wait wait wait! The dad came back. Yeah yeah he came back and married some other chick. So now he's in this oh new show. God. So you see her, uh, uh, Honey Boo Boo, going back and forth between her and the stepmother and. Sugar Bear now, it just, it's, so, it's, it's so, her, I don't sh- freaking care about this <laughs> family's life. <laughs> exactly. That's Why good. does everyone do this? I know, Why, it, it what keeps. What's wrong with reality television? If exactly. I wanted to watch that, I have my own family to, to take it. <laughs> to... I know, right? It, it, still, it keeps going, it's like, really? And the damn. I fi- just. I could just take a video camera and follow my own family around. Yeah. And just be Speaking like, hey, look what I did. <laughs> Speaking of, TLC has a new show coming out about a family that's like like a hair salon owner. And like, like I saw it and I was like, I was like, wow, I really don't care. I'm like, more people that we don't care about. And we're supposed to care about these stupid people's mundane lives. Thanks, TLC. He also yeah. like the dumping ground for that crap, I swear. But anyway, back to the movie. Um, yeah. yeah, they do a parody of Rise of the Planet of the Apes. And basically, it's this is probably the closest to an actual joke. Um, they have, they're like walking past monkeys in their cages. And like one, they're like lifting weights like it's prison. <laughs> that was, it was kind of, it was okay. a little better. Yeah. Okay. I can, Yeah. Every once in a while, when when you get past the really really bad jokes, you'll come to the one that's so somewhat sort of decent. And you'll go, ha 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 ha. Although, okay, I will say this: this is the actually the one joke that actually that I actually do qualify as a legit joke. Uh, parodying uh, this is actual parody right here. Parodying what they did in one of the Paranormal Activity movies. There's a part where uh, there's a vacuum that comes sentient, and it's like in the the pool in the backyard and it's like spinning around while it's not plugged in so it's like possessed in this they have a vacuum that comes to life and it holds a party and there's a bunch of different house appliances and a bunch of other vacuums that are partying in the pool and then like they show like them doing like beer bombs and crap and then like the next morning they show like they're all wiped out there's a vacuum that has like a bunch of dicks drawn on it like it was it actually felt like they actually took time to watch a paranormal activity movie they're like we could do something with that. And then, like, they have these vacuums and appliances having a pool party. It was kind of clever. But everything else is just stupid, dumb. Oh, God. And they have to end the movie. The movie begins with Charlie Sheen as himself 
not as the character from the other scary movies that he was in. And Lindsay Lohan, who, mind you, I believe in that same year was in the worst movie I've ever seen in my life, Inappropriate Comedy. So they're together. They have, like, they're, like, at Charlie Sheen's I place. Used to know. I know. Doing Charlie like a... Sheen and Lindsay Lohan are, like, doing, like, a sex tape or something. Mm-hmm. And then, like, you know, the house is that. And then, like, <laughs> I'm just and, pointing that out. Charlie yeah, because it's Charlie asshole. Sheen. Yeah, and then at the end of the movie, it cuts back to them, and that like I forget exactly what happens, but I think Charlie, one of them dies, and then all of a sudden, a car comes ramping through the wall and hits one of them, and then they oh, it hits both of them, and then they die. Now I want to ask. What the hell is with parody movies, like other these movie movies? Why is it they always have to end with a, with someone getting hit by a large object or a vehicle? Because Never it, was scary when, movie. it was funny when Scary Movie 1 did it, and then they decided, and then after that they decided, hey, let's keep going, let's keep doing this. It was like, a, it's like a trend, and you, you can only tell the joke so many times before it gets tired. Hell, it got tired in Scary Movie 3. Because they hit the kid twice. Yeah. Kept doing it so many times. And then Seltzerberg did it in their movies. I'm calling it before I even sit down to watch the comeback. I guarantee someone's going to get hit at the end, at the end of that. Mm-hmm. It, it, but Scary Movie 5 is, just wasn't funny. They parodied the lesbian scene from um, from Black Swan. And uh, they're like, okay, okay. This part is so stupid. They show like... Like, they show, you know how, like, you know, sexual imagery, they'll have, like, a train going into, like, a tunnel. is like, you know, is like, sexual innuendo. Here they have yeah, two tunnels north to northwest did that better. I... Yeah, right. But they have, and that's when they have, like, two tunnels colliding, and then they show two tacos bumping together. It's, like, not clever. They even parody Ted. It's a talking teddy bear movie. Like, they have uh, one, chick, one chick going down on another... And then, like, she looks down, and then the teddy bear comes up from out of frame. He's like, he says something that, like, in a bad Seth MacFarlane impression, that goes back down. And I'm like, thank you. For no reason, we referenced that. Oh, you watched the unrated version, then. That was only the unrated version. It wasn't in the theatrical cut. <laughs> no wonder it sucks even worse. It's um, a, yeah, right? It's like, yeah, here's Ted for the unrated version out there. <laughs> it wasn't even... Th- oh, in one... One more one. So, I, this is the last thing I gotta say about this. They reference Inception, and it is the laziest parody of Inception I've ever seen. Because in it, like, they're like, "What's going on?" So they hook each other up. They hook up Ashley Tisdale to a guy who was in Scary Movie Three, but it's not playing the same character. And the joke is, he ends up getting hooked up to like. Oh, they also hook up the dog to be in the dream, and I forget where the joke exactly went, but they end up hooking up the. Uh, the guy to like a rectal thermometer or something, something that connects to someone's ass. And it's just like, this is a terrible Inception parody. They didn't do anything clever with this whatsoever. I don't know. I don't, I, I didn't even watch those move. uh, oh, no, Inception, Inception I did see, but I, I still don't get that. I still don't get that. Yeah. That I, is a discussion for another time. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, the thing about David Zucker is that he's from Wisconsin. He's from, He was born in Milwaukee. He's a big Green Packer fan. And apparently in this movie, during the Black Swan sequence, he and the sound mixer, Chris Durfee, have a cameo dressed as Packer fans for the Lambo Leap. And it's it's like, st- don't shoehorn the Green Bay Packer shit in your spoof movies, goddammit. I mean... It's like me and you being a Wisconsinite here. God damn, just leave the Packers out of your movies. Maybe he's trying to be the Stan Lee of his own, uh, of his own uh, <laughs> movies here. Oh God, I can see that. David Zucker. Hi, it's like me, that. David Zucker, not really played by Stan Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there, there, there's a scene in the movie where uh, Charlie Sheen leaves his little hand in bed and the cat jumps on the bed. <laughs> and Sheen says, Get out of here, Emilio. Mm. Oh, that's right. He names his cat Emilio. Uh, just after, after his brother. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a reference to his brother. He's like, get out of here, Emilio. <laughs> okay, that was kind of funny. I put the... Kind of funny-ish. Funny-ish. Not enough to to make you want to come up and say and say hey yeah this movie's a a, a classic everyone should watch yeah see um, it's, but this is interesting because like we established this David Zucker directed the additional re, uh, reshoots from for the movie and Ashley Tisdale said in interviews that the material from the reshoots and the ADR sessions plenty of those made sixty percent of the final theatrical cut. So good to know that no one had their shit together on this movie. No. Okay. And and the director had nothing to do with the editing since he was already engaged in doing the Best Man Holiday at the time. Okay. Mind blown. Mind blown. So. So go on. Or is there any, is there anything else there? Yeah. Scary movie talks so much. And now we've sort of briefly tapped upon something else that uh, uh, that is equally that that has equally uh, killed comedy here. I think, in a sense, uh, you say you what you watch the unrated version. Oh God! Okay, yeah. Here's the thing: what is with comedy unrated. doing unrated versions? Like they're they're not unrated at all for a majority of them. A lot of times, it's the same movie. With like fifteen minutes extra, it's Half, it, like a good chunk of them don't have nudity in them, so there no. really is no reason for them to be unrated. Yeah, it's like they just—it's mm-hmm. just, it's like a director's cut. They just add additional scenes that did not make the the theatrical cut. Yeah, but in a, yeah, but in a in in comedies, uh, in particular, it um, it, it it seems to especially, even with even with spoof movies. It it seems to be particularly bad. I remember watching, because I, I hate to go back to this as an example, but um, another example another example of how how a joke uh, of how a joke gets killed. Uh, what when I saw Epic Movie, I saw the unrated cut. Okay, let's. I can't. I obviously can't show this scene because. I, I, I didn't even look for it. Hell, I don't want to watch it again. Um, um, they have they have the one scene uh, poking fun at the Narnia films where uh, they come across the they come across the wardrobe for the first time. It's just sort of wondrous and whatnot. And as soon as they open up the door, a bunch of crap falls out of the wardrobe and lands on them. Okay, guess what? That's kind of funny. Because they, the joke kind of works there because, it 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 it's building up to, it, it's building up to a certain form of payoff. But in the unrated cut, how do they kill it? They have a naked woman running out of the out of the wardrobe, looking around. And then, and then, running. And then uh, running off again. I know what you're talking about. God damn it! I remember that actually. I remember seeing that version. God damn it! And I'm just like, yeah, she, she's kind of hot, but what was the point of that? There was no joke to it. Like you said, like it was funny because like you're like, oh, they're building up wonder, whimsy. Obviously, you know, a joke's coming. And then boom, you know, they open up the wardrobe and a bunch of crap comes out of it. That was that's funny. It's a clever joke. You know, you don't expect the wardrobe from Lion Witch and the Wardrobe to be filled with a bunch of clutter. And then they kill it because no reason whatsoever. Some naked woman just runs out. We no reason. I I, I remember reading a uh, reading someone uh, someone's uh, someone wrote an article about what makes unrated movies terrible, and they poked fun at that scene in particular. They said they uh, they paid they paid some chick from the Playboy Mansion twenty bucks to uh, to. Uh, to run naked across the, uh, across the screen for no apparent reason and thus makes it unrated. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. It wouldn't... I know that's I know that's disparaging, but you know what? It, they might as well have. They might as well have just done that. 
Yeah, it's some um, ex- <sighs> some other uh, spoof slash parody movies I would like to bring up just for the last couple of minutes here. I like, think we've got ten minutes left here, so let's see. They, oh, yeah, of course we've got stuff like Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, Omega Wright. Those are kind of parodies of the genre, being like action movies and zombie movies. Austin Powers. Everybody? Austin Powers. And at, World End, at World's End, you're forgetting. Oh, Mr. Her. Mr. Yeah, Blood and Ice Cream. <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, that wasn't even listed here. Genre parodies. Ge- yeah, genre parodies, yeah. Uh, Austin Powers is actually a really good parody of James Bond, in a way. Um, and other spy films. There. And other spy films, including the... Uh, the, the Flint films with ah uh, yes 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 beforehand yeah there's the naked, James Coburn there's the Naked Gun trilogy there is uh, not 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 another team movie which is a, a, a par- parody of, parody of team movies so there's genre kind of uh, parody movies out there Spy Hard another spy one uh, Galaxy Quest is considered as a parody movie of yeah that's also. another that's another not just not just Star Trek, but the Star Trek fandom yep. as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to see here. A lot of Mel Brooks one. A lot of Mel Brooks movies are parodies, like Spaceballs and you know all that stuff. Uh, Classic. Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles. Another spy one would be Johnny. Young Frankenstein. Uh, yep. And we already did a Mel Brooks episode, so if you want to check that out at the end, you can definitely check that out. Um, Kung Pao Enter the Fist. That one, that one's great. <laughs> Kung Pao Enter the Fist. Why is this not? Why is this not really remembered? I mean, it's it, it, Steve Steve Oderkirk, uh Steve Oderkirk just he fought he fought hard to to find a niche in not just in comedy but. Uh, but in in '90s culture, and I think that with that one, it was it was just so dumb, it amazingly worked. It was it's an interesting movie because he took a movie, an existing movie, redubbed it, and green screened mm-hmm. himself inside of it. With of, the, of course with the, CGI parts too, with his tongue and the cows. And the gophers. Yeah. Oh, go for yeah. Stu, yeah. Go for Chucks. Go for Chucks, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, for is that was on a what a ten million dollar budget, seventeen. Very, 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 very tight. But considering all all that they were doing, I think the effects work was amazing in that movie. Oh yeah. I'm oh. just like, okay, how did? Uh, okay, you you have to you you have to sit down just watch a couple of the. Uh, at the end of the movie, they have a few show- scenes in the credits. They show you how they did it and whatnot. And you and when you were watching the film, you're like, I didn't even, I didn't even notice this, or I didn't notice that, because you're you're paying attention to the film itself. The um, the jokes are uh, the jokes are carrying the scenes. The stupidity of everything is carrying the scenes that you're so you're so invested in that and not. What's a special effect and what's not? Although in some cases that you can definitely tell the difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, but is this part of the old movie or is this part of something that was reshot? Exactly, that's the mystery of it. See, that's that's the thing about that movie. Mm-hmm. It's like, I mean, no, I would be kind of interested to dig up that movie that they actually used that for because I want to see what the original movie was without editing and all that stuff redubbing. Um, looking through. Oh, this is Spinal Tap is another one that's kind of a parody of the music that's... documentary. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I just Ma- saw, saw that for the first time. That was... A lot Documentaries of t- are their own are their own genre. That's true. I think. That's true, but sure. they... Borat, Bruno, and... Uh, yeah. Recently, they did, they did another one of those, too. It was very similar to Spinal Tap, but it was like with pop musicians. It had Lonely Island in it. Oh, that's... Um, uh, yep. Pop Star. Pop Star, yeah. That... that it's not like a mockumentary. That's kind of like they do that, but it's like a narrative in it with it as well. Yeah, there's a story in it. it it's not that good, and it didn't look good that it's, much. It's kind of... It's kind of, yeah. I mean, this is Spinal Tap, and you know it's a mockumentary, but it's just they 
people, all the musicians, all the musicians are like, this shit's real. This, this is, they, they believed it 100%. It's like, this is so true. Why are you saying about my life? Um, Mc, McGruber. Oh, that's right. They made the. Oh, God. It was a parody of MacGyver and SNL, and they made that into a movie. Uh, dance. Look, for... I, look, aside, uh, look, aside from Wayne's World and Blues Brothers, there are, like, almost no good SNL movies. I know. <laughs> it's kind of sad. Dance. Dance flick. That was okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, it was, it, it could have been a, it could have been a passing of the torch of, uh, of, uh, from one generation of weigh-ins to another. Yeah. It almost worked in that sense. Um, but it, it was a flop and like, what, what happened to weigh-ins junior, you know, after yeah. that? Never ever out. No, uh, Monty Python is actually great for parodies as well. They do oh, great. great stuff. Team America World Police is a parody of good movie. Yeah, combination of combination spoofing uh, Thunderbirds, uh, uh, the works of Jerry Anderson, uh, and also the political scene at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I thought of one. I, I, I was going to do a review of this later in the year for, like, Halloween. Did you guys know Stan Helsing? Oh. Yes. God damn yeah. it. We're going to kill S-T-A-N. A-N. We're going to kill S-T-A-N. Oh, it's... Uh, oh, it... It's all over the world. It, it's... Uh, okay, I kind of get it. Um... It, you, um, yeah. It, it introduced me to the it introduced me to the classic song. I I don't want to go home. I'll give it that much. Yeah. Oh. Other than that, though, I thought it was just it was just okay. It sort of came. It, yeah, went under the radar. Oh, it's that. Uh, it should. It's the other. Uh, it's that member of Keenan and Kel that still actually works. He's oh yeah. Kid. He was a friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shriek, if you know what I did last Friday the 13th. We want to be scary movies so bad. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, I'm like, like I remember I made a post about this. Mike, you commented yeah, on I it. Did. It was like, let's see. So, so, Scream I... was like a satire of horror movies. And then the scary movie was a parody of that. Yeah, and, and, then, and then this... Shriek Shriek if you know what I did last Friday the thirteenth kind of like combined parody. kind of parody all the, like all the above like it was just it's weird. A, it's a poor man's scream. It, it's, uh, a, it's a it's a poor man's scary movie. Yeah. <laughs> Scrape at the bottom of the Tropic Thunder is actually considered movie. as a parody. Of what? Hollywood action movies, I guess. Technically. No. I don't know, I'm just looking sh just randomly and it just it pops up. I mean, they parody a bunch of different celebrities. Like, they parody, like, you know, the, the rapper who wants to be an actor. And then they, like, Jack Black's pretty much parodying Eddie Murphy with all the Fast Food movies. Yeah. And in a and sense, so he's, uh, in a sense, he's technically also parodying uh, coked up comedians. Yeah. But, you know, the, the, that's. It doesn't really, doesn't really count as a parody, I think. Yeah, I mean, I'm just like I said, I just typed in list, and then it's like, ah, oh, here we go, there you go. So yeah, it's it's poking fun at something, therefore it counts as an all-around satire. Yeah. So uh, overall, parodies are just they started off so great in the early years, you know, and they kind of dip down, down further into the realm of film. I mean, there's no um, good parodies nowadays. Well, the parodies have always, they've always had their, parody films have always had their ups and downs. I want to, I want to bring, I want to bring uh, up the case of, uh, of a film that, that you guys, uh, uh, you guys probably haven't even heard of. And I, I don't even, I don't even know if this counts as a film. That's the thing. Because uh, 
because uh, let's see the, the the full title the full title of the movie title of the movie uh, from 1991, we have Night of the Day of the Dawn of the Sun of the Bride of the Return of the Revenge of the Terror of the Attack of the Mut Evil Mutant Alien Flesh-Eating Hellbound Zombified Living Dead Part 2 in Shocking 2D. Eat your heart out, Craig Moss. Um, you, you had parody movies with long titles? Uh... uh would you like uh, this movie parodies uh, this movie parodies uh, Night of the Living Dead by by simply redubbing the movie and adding silly silly music in there oh. and silly dialogue and every wow. time a zombie comes in and the and the blonde gal runs off she's saying oh no fags let's run oh my god. Wait, when did this come out? 91. Fuck. It's not even a case of, oh, this movie hasn't aged well in terms of the comedy. It's it's like a middle it's middle school level of... of I, I remember just... Described. I, I remember, yes, they just keep referring to zombies as fags throughout the whole movie. That's the joke. It sounds like this was made by a bunch of edgelord high schoolers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And this was somebody's college project too. I hope they failed. I hope they miserably failed for that. Yeah. It was. It, oh, it was made in New York City by a college film student on a budget of very little money. Only one person voiced the characters. Really? It was probably him. I wouldn't be surprised. Him in a bad falsetto voice. Oh, friends. Oh, my God. Oh, fags. Get the fuck out of here. Hey, man, I don't know what's going on with this fucking fags. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. That's, oh, that's dumb. That's dumb. Oh, poor. Oh, poor. poor yeah. Poor, uh, poor Romero. His classic. Poor Romero. Well, that's what happens when the, your film goes into public domain. Oh, that's true. Like, if you want to see funny dubs of things, that's easy. Watch, uh, well, first of all, watch Rift Tracks. They te those technically count, I guess. Those are amazing. They they pretty much pick apart when they when the movies suck. Or you can the mission go on, for us. Yes. Or oh, yeah. you can watch you know, a bridge series on YouTube, which I mean, you got like you know, Team Four Star, most of the stuff they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's also considered a part of parody too, right? Redubbing, redubbing and making jokes that way, and cutting scenes in a certain way. That's clever. Yeah. It's a new way of making material funny. I mean, if Kung Pao can do it, so can you. That's and hopefully you can do it well. Yes, very well. Yeah. You gotta make sure it's good. You can't just like half hazardly just take clips and be like, I'm going to do the, the redubbing myself, and I'm going to cut it so shittingly. It's like, you got to do it right. Got to make Don't sure. Don't just do that. <laughs> and my dialogue is, dialogue is just going to be fags, fags, fags. Make sure the only way you can do dubs like that right is if you're Brock Baker. Uh, you guys know who that is? I do. I know. I've seen his videos. Yeah, he does Brock's dubs. He's got his own YouTube channel, Brock Dubs. He does... I mean, like, Djibouti Dubs, too, as well. That's another great YouTube channel. Oh, Djibouti Dubs are good. Yeah, yeah, that's a great dubbing channel you can check out, too. It's like, dubbing is a, is a new kind of parody as well, so... Um, yeah, any final thoughts? Uh, I think we summed up a lot. Yeah, it's... Yeah, parody films are going to have their ups and downs, and that's really about it. Um, we, we, hope you, we hope we gave you some... Ideas of some good ones that you that you might want to watch uh, in the near future, and uh, we hope we gave you some ideas of what to avoid. Yes, especially if you clicked on this episode to wanting to know about parody movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for listening, watching this particular episode. Give this episode a like if you like this. Share this to people. Uh, who are interested in parody movies and uh, subscribe down below click that red button but down below to check out more podcasts and uh, and 
And if you're still with us, stay tuned after the video for a little extra plug there. Oh, yeah. Right, Mike? Oh, yeah. It's there. It's going to be there. You just you see it at the end. You click on it. It will go straight to there for you. Uh, a lot of good stuff. Hooray. A lot of good stuff. Check out the description. I might add some links to uh, uh, James and Stevie. So you can check their stuff and their YouTube channels as well. Give them a subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, James, the next episode we're going to adventure on, since it's going to be two weeks from now, since Val Valerian is coming out in a couple of weeks, we're going to talk about Luke Bazan. Oh! That's why I said we're going to nice. talk, talk about that later, because it's just when the movie comes out, and it's like, hey, let's talk about Luke Bazan. He's got some movies uh, worth talking about, and, uh... That movie looks pretty. <laughs> pretty. <laughs> it's the next level of the fifth element. Yeah, remember that. Yeah, we're we're. It. It's it's definitely, it's definitely, uh, trying to resuscitate that portion of your brain. That's like okay for those, for those of you who remember that movie that came in the late, in the mid to late nineties. That was. Kind of like uh, kind of like. Star Wars meets Blade Runner only a lot co more colorful. Um, yeah, this is this is that uh, this is an extension of that. Exactly. So uh, let's see how that movie goes. I mean, Luke Besson has his ups and downs, and we'll talk about that in a couple of weeks. So uh, thanks for listening and watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Right on. Ciao for now.